Hi, it's Tim Williams reporting for The Unshackled. We're on the steps of Victoria's Parliament House here on Sunday, the 11th of February 2018. So we're here to cover Protect Victoria's Rally, calling on the state's government to uh, take action on the state's crime wave. As you can see, they're just getting set up uh, behind us here. So I've been told by the organiser Hayden Bradford, who uh, we had on our uh, Waves podcast previously, that he's expecting 300 to 400 people here. So we hope that it's a good showing. Okay, um, look, I'm somewhat disappointed. I was of the opinion there was about 300 to 400 people coming, but this people, and that's, you know, committed on the Facebook groups, page, public page in this one. But, you know, that's, that's what we get. However, the um, Greek Festival is on, so maybe there's some people who are finishing up their Sulaki and we'll be down here shortly. First of all, can I say thank you for coming. It is a shame that we have to stand here in Australia's most lawless state and have this, because that's exactly what we have. I'm going to have a few words. There's no way I can stop Arby from having a few words. He will have a few words. And we have with us, um, I'm trying to find her, Rachel Carling Jenkins from the Australian Conservative Party will also be having a few words. Um, she leads the um, Australian Conservative Party from the Upper House in um, Victoria. So she's a Victorian politician. I just got a little over so we don't get the speaker feedback. That's very smart advice from Amy. Well, I'm usually a good looking man, as he'll say. He also gives me smart advice. Um, can I point out first of all by saying that Protect Victoria is not a hate site, we're not a racist site. Despite what Neil Mitchell says, we are not a vigilante group. I mean, I'm 60, I'm too old to be going out late at night with baseball bats, right? Um, we are not a political site, we, we don't push any political party. However, the ALP and the MEPs were invited to speak here. And they get invited all the time and they don't turn up, so that shows you something ACP says. That's good. Um, the other thing we, we, we are not is we're not an anti-police group. In fact, we are huge supporters of our police force. And more importantly, um, we are a peaceful group of people who have just had a bloody gutful of what the government is doing. I think those signs are going to have to come down. And um, what the government is doing, and of course, just as importantly, what our court system is doing. I'm going to fly through this, I'm going to raise some valid points. I don't want to get down into discussing individual crimes and things that are happening, because we know that there is a number of really, really sad and bad crimes happening. I do want to talk about where the blame sits for these crimes occurring, and I also want to talk about what we can do. Right? No more discussing about the, the crime stuff. Let's look at the solutions. Um, we know that there's people... Oh, sorry. Um, I often say to people that the Birch Street tragedy which occurred in, um, on January the 20th last year encapsulates, for me anyway, everything that is wrong with our law and order in this state. Six people died. One of them was a 10-year-old girl and the other one was a 3-year-old boy. The girl was named Zach, uh, sorry, the girl was named Tyler, and the boy was named three months old. Parents should not have to bury their children because of mistakes by our government and our legal system. Let's look at the mistakes that were made. Number one, a repeat violent offender was granted bail. That was a failure. The reason he got bail was because in 2015, the Daniel Andrews government softened the bail laws. On that same day, the police at the incident site wanted to take the driver of that motor vehicle out before he got onto the footpath. They were unable to do that because police command told them six times not to. They had two options. They wanted to ram the vehicle or they wanted to shoot him. One, when he was doing lappies in front of the Flinders Street railway station before he went anywhere near Bird Street and up the pavement. Because police command failed to allow that to happen, we ended up with six people dead, 30 plus injured, and um, God, God Almighty knows how. I mean, I, I, I'm a father of two kids, I don't know how you want to forget burying your children, right? And to think that, that was avoidable. The whole thing was avoidable. A lot of the violent crime we are seeing in Victoria is avoidable. We know that people are being injured by, um, in Victoria by members of youth crime gangs, and I'm going to put some blame down here, and I don't care, but, by um, youth crime gangs. 
And on Sundays, okay, on Sundays, people are injured. On other days, people die. We know that our victims of crime are being ignored for, are being ignored by the government and by the judicial system. We know that there's a guy and his wife who are the subject of a very violent home invasion in the western suburbs at the moment. They lost both their cars and a few other sad and rather unbelievable things happened to them. They got eight dollars for the victims of crime. What an insult! The victims of crime should not have given them anything. I mean, that's just a straight out insult. And boy, that is one boy, I can tell you now, I won't be voting for the government any time soon. But we know that repeat violent youth offender crime is happening. We know that these crimes are, are increasing because the government's soft on crime policies, a judicial system that fails to understand that if you release a person on bail who is a repeat offender, guess what they're going to do? They are going to be another repeat offender. And they will repeat the offence. I speak to police officers regularly and they tell me the biggest problem they have is fronting these youths in, 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 to the courts and two weeks later knowing they're going to arrest the same people again. This continual granting of bail, probation, community service orders, youth supervision orders by the judicial system for our youth, it's just crazy. It should be, you do one violent crime, you are taken out of society for a very, very long time. End the story. And we also... <laughs> Look, I really do love the police, I do, but their police command sucks, right? I mean, they have no idea what's going on up there. We also have a problem with um, police command. Actually, one minute denying we have gang problems in Melbourne. And the next minute saying, oh, we could have gang problems in Melbourne. I mean, they, they have no idea, these guys. They ought to come out and speak to some of the victims I do. Okay, so my argument has, and it's this. We can't be silent on this anymore. We need to actually stand up and start letting the government know that we need changes. And we need those changes now, not tomorrow. And if there are any politicians listening, I know there are a couple of people who if there are any politicians listening and they doubt anything that I've just said about rampant violent crime, can I just say this? The evidence to support what I've just said, it can be found in our cemeteries, it can be found in our hospitals, it can be found in the waiting seats of psychiatrists and psychologists, it can be found in our mental health hospitals. Because some of these people are so badly affected that they're suicidal. We don't hear that from the government or the police or the judicial system. The evidence can also be found in the many people, young and old, who are too scared to go out. So Judge Lex Lazarie, you are a goose to put your crap from Mansfield and turn around and say, that oh, everything's fine up here. You are a dickhead and you need to stand down from the bench, mate. <laughs> so, from your Daniel Andrews Attorney General, Martin Fakula. Oh, I love him. He, doesn't, he loves me too. That's why he doesn't talk to me. Um, Federal Opposition Leader Bill Shorten, Judge Lex Lazarie, and of course, the Police Commissioner Graham Ashton. If you want to go out and visit people, and I say this to you, if you wish to go out and visit people who are too scared to go out at night, come out with me, I will take you. We won't take any of your bodyguards, just us, and we will go out. Now, there's the offer, let's see if you take me up on it. And I will take you to suburbs where people are too scared to go out. I will take you to suburbs where people will not even take their children to during the day because of youth crime gangs. And to say that there is no youth crime and there are no gangs in the state of Victoria is an insult to the many, many victims of crime that we have. And I'm quite sure that Premier Andrews and the judicial system and Judge Lex Lazarus for that matter and the police commissioner have no idea what it is like to be carved up with machetes during a home invasion, to be pulled out of your car and beaten up and kicked in the stomach at a carjacking, 
If you're walking down the street and be assaulted by a gang, because they are gutless, they will not take you on one-on-one. -on -one. They are gutless, they operate in gangs. What about the tourist store robberies where the people were attacked with sledgehammers? What sort of a country are we living in? I tend to do a bit of a name and shame thing, but since I've just mentioned the jewellery store robberies, let me say this. A judge whose name escaped me, I have her name written down, I will mention it. One of the guys who was the organiser of those jewellery store robberies said, he was, he was on bail, they put back on bail again, mind you. But, but he applied to the courts to go overseas, to get his head straight. Despite the police saying no, the judge turned around, and she approved this guy who was involved in five jewellery store robberies where they used sledgehammers and machetes, and machetes, is that better? Yes. Sorry, thank you. And where they used um, machetes and sledgehammers. And I thought someone yelled at him. And he got bail. And then she allowed him to go overseas. I will bet London to a brick that bloke does not come back. Well, what I'm saying to the police command, what I'm saying to the judicial system, and what I'm saying and what we are saying to the government is stop demeaning the victims of crime. They've been through enough. Look after their welfare and their human rights before you look after the welfare and the human rights of the goddamn offenders. To the ever-growing list of victims of crime in the state of Victoria, can I say this? It's not your fault that your home was invaded violently. It is not your fault that your business was invaded violently. It is not your fault that your kids were beaten up on their way home from school. It is not your fault that you were dragged out of a motor vehicle at 9 o'clock at night and had the living daylights kicked out of you when these bastards already had your car. It is not your fault that you were sliced up with machetes and beaten senseless and you were unable to defend your, per your family that night. That is not your fault. It is not your fault that you have to spend so much time in a mental health hospital, hospital because of the trauma, the anxiety that you are now going through from seeing your children beaten, seeing your wife punched. That is not your fault. The fault for that lies directly with the Victorian state government yes. and also lies with our judicial system. And to a certain degree, it sits with the police command. Because I'll tell you now, the rank and file of the police force, the guys I talk to, if they had their way, they would be stepping out of cars at these home invasions and with these thugs. And they would remove their hats from their heads. And they would be stepping out in groups of four. And they would be carrying with them pepper spray, batons, and their guns. And they would not be frightened to use any of them. Just as importantly to our victims of crime, some of you are here today, I know it's not your fault that the victims of crime tribunal treats you worse than they treat the offenders. Well, that's a shame that we're going to some left here today because this is where I really cut loose. But the overwhelming amount of home invasions, business invasions, carjackings and assault are caused by youth crime gangs. Yes. The majority of those youth crime gangs, the majority of those youth crime gangs, sorry, can I just let me jump back on LHCV insurance tell us that once every 15 minutes there is a violent home invasion in the state of Victoria. Once every 15 minutes ago, that is new, that, that's just come out a couple, couple of months ago. But the police and the crime stats also tell us that within these youth crime gangs, the majority of the people committing these crimes are repeat violent offenders on bail, on probation, on community service orders, youth supervision orders, etc. All these were introduced, by the way, by the um, ALP. 
The guy who stabbed a police officer in the head some time ago, I'm just trying to see which police, I'm just trying to remember which police officer it was. Um, I didn't I did know the guy loosely, but um, the, the offender there, they caught him for breaking in and doing that home invasion and for stabbing that dude in the eye, the police officer in the eye. He was given 200 hours community service. That's bullshit, isn't it? That's just bullshit. Right. Now, the police and crime stats, the police and the crime stats will tell us just about our youth crime gang. Within our youth crime gangs, the Sudanese population are overly represented. So let us not pussyfoot around with this. We we'll know that there are other people who commit crimes, white Australians commit most of the fraud crime, along with Asians in this country. That's not the police crime stat. Because we all know Asians are very, very good with technology, right? <laughs> so they're doing all the, all the frauding of the banks. Adult crime, the majority of adult crime in this state and in this country for that matter, is caused by white Caucasians like me. Except I've lived the first 60 years of my life crime free. I hope free, I hope to live the next 60 years of my life crime free, right? But at the end of the day, the majority of youth crime in this country is caused by, sorry, in the state, is caused by Sudanese youth crime gangs. I'm talking home invasions, I'm talking carjackings, I'm talking violence assaults on kids when they're walking home just so they can get their phones, and I'm talking, um, Businesses like, we see it, we see it in the media every night practically anyway, but right? we don't know they use crime gangs. Right. Now, the majority of attacks on our police, and we've had three of late, three of late, are caused by Sudanese youth crime gangs. Shopping centre recently, the bloke was police officer kicked in the head, but shopping centre was at high point. Right? The dude that did that was on bail, by the way. He's on bail again. Unbelievable! If any of us did that, we'd be in the jail. We'd be remanded to face a court case. Lock them up. See, so my argument has always been, and has been for some time now, that it's really that the judicial system and our government rules look after the human rights of, of people who are new to our country or come into our country. But what about our human rights? Yeah. We demand the right not to have our homes invaded. We should have the goddamn right to take our children to a park in the middle of the, to in the middle of the day whenever we want to. Yes. We can't do that anymore. Some parks are no go areas. So let me just very quickly summarise that. The reason that we have all this youth crime occurring is because we have a government that is very, very soft on law. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if you people know this, but this was kept very quiet. The Daniel Andrews government was elected in November of 2014. Early 2015, the Daniel Andrews government not only softened the bail laws, but what they said is that if you are a youth offender under the age of 18, 18, no, under the age of 18, and you breach bail, that is no longer a criminal offence. So you can breach bail if you are 17 and have done numerous home invasions. And it's not a criminal offence. No criminal record for under 18. Well, somebody was on 3AW some time ago talking about, um, there was a guy um, who was up on 101 charge, no, 78 charges. He had um, violated bail nine times and he was back out on bail again. Disgusting. Because it's not a crime. It should be. As I said, we know that the majority of crimes are already being done by people who have fronted the courts previously, right? They're on bail, use the supervision orders, community service orders, and um, probation. I'm not sure what a youth supervision order is. It's sort of bloody confusing. But anyway. So that's what I was talking about. The fault lies directly with the state government of Victoria and the judicial system. I have written to the judicial system on numerous times, including their judges, 
And these arrogant sucks won't even, won't even respond. They haven't even got the courtesy to write back. <laughs> Lisa Neville, our beloved police commission, uh, police minister, but not. She actually said two months ago not to report all crimes to the police. What sort of a stupid woman is that? I'll tell you now, report all crimes to the police. The reason you must is that, and you also must insist, the police fill out a report about it, no matter how minor, because that goes directly from the police station into the crime stats. So if you don't report the crime, it won't go into the crime stats. The only reason Lisa never would have said not to report those crimes would have been so that they don't go into the crime stats. Now, it's a big jump to call it corruption, but it's certainly not right. Report all crimes. A fundamental principle of government is to keep people safe. I had the Prime Minister come out and say that when we had the Brighton siege terrorist incident, where that um, three police officers were wounded, a guy by the name of uh, Kyle Howe, who was a receptionist at the time, was executed by a person by a person who um, had been released on bail, sorry, no, on parole. He was in fact in jail for very, very violent home invasions and they let him out on parole. A week later, two weeks later, he went and got a gun from somewhere and uh, carved up Carl Howe. Can I just say this? Mr. Andrews, K. Howe was a very, very precious human being who your laws and the judicial system allowed to be murdered. It is your fault that these crimes are occurring. In 2016, the Victorian government gave our police force $600 million to fight crime. <laughs> 2017, the crime stats for violent crime by youth offenders is the highest ever. The highest ever. So, there's still things that we, oh, there's one thing we should do here, take the $600 million back from the police force and let's give it to the victims of crime. They deserve a little something. <laughs> Let me know this voice and nonsense is put out by the Victorian um, government. They bang on about they're putting 3,000 extra police into the police service. Can I just say, that does not happen until the year 2022. It is now 2018. The extra 3,000 police forces, uh, police officers will not be in our police force until 2022. Point one. Point two. The amount of police officers who are leaving the police force is greater than the amount of police officers who are coming in. The reason for that is they're sick and tired of fronting these punks to a judicial system, not recommending bail, and having a judge turn around, puff out his chest and say, what do you know, Mr. Police Officer? We're going to give him probation or a slap on the wrist or something else for that. That's why they're leaving. They're frustrated. Oh, and as I said before, they know that two weeks later they're going to be arresting the same guy for the same thing. Two weeks ago on TV, Lisa Neville, their beloved police minister, God, I love this woman, she just sets herself up to be carved up, you know. She actually was on TV and she was blaming the media for reporting all the crime because she said that's encouraging them. Wrong. What's encouraging them is that when they break the law, Lisa, your laws are letting them back out again. It's got nothing at all to do with the media, thank God we've got the media covering it. The new bar laws which expect to come in in July, mind you, July 2018, that's this year. Um, Daniel Andrews made a big song and dance about it. Um, after Burke Street said he was going to fix the problem, two months later we had... Um, uh, the Brighton terrorist siege. Can I just say just one on that? Look, it's sad that people die, that one guy died. I don't care about the offender that got shot. That, um, it's sad that three police officers um, were, were also wounded. But that's, I mean, if the media want to see a terrorist um, incident, then go and have a look at the amount of home invasions that people are suffering. Try and tell me that they're, they're, 
but they're not in terror when these things are going down. Okay, so the term, I've read the new bar, right? It's meant to come in in July of this year, right? Um, I don't know why the government has held all this up, because last year, after the Birch Street incident, I would have uh, changed the bar lake straight away. That would have kept the people on side, right? So it's meant to come in in July 2018. From what I've heard, it won't be. They're going to stall it until about September because that will look good for them with the election coming up in November, right? It's all this political nonsense we've got to carry on with. But what is interesting, and this is where Martin Pakula, the Attorney General, and Daniel Andrews have not commented to me on this. In there, they use the term exceptional circumstances a lot. The person who will go to jail or be detained unless exceptional circumstances exist. Let me give you what exceptional circumstances mean. Your Honour, my client did not mean to sexually assault those two women on the train because he is not used to the culture in Australia and does not know our laws. That's an exceptional circumstance. At the time of the violent home invasion, my client was on the drug ice. That's an exceptional circumstance. And there are a whole pile of them. It means the offender has come from a dysfunctional family and therefore suffers depression. That is why he pulled that lady out of the car and a set of lights and kicked the living daylights out of her. And then stole her car. That's an exceptional circumstance. This applies to youth criminals, by the way. I don't think it applies to adults. I hope it doesn't. There's, there's a beauty. I, I actually heard this one given, given down in court. The judge wanted to send us punk to jail, right? Oh, having detained at one of our holiday camps for years. His lawyer stood up and said, You know, there's no argument this bloke is violent. However, he now has a girlfriend and we think he will settle down. Here's an excuse. You got young kids and they want to commit crime, make sure they got a girlfriend or a boyfriend, right? I'm not complaining, it fell over. In fact, I think that was the day I was so disappointed in what I'd heard, I was asked to leave without a few words. But um, exceptional circumstances also means that the offender comes from a country and will not be able to handle our big boys' prison. That is why when you look at youth detention centres, and I'll talk about that very shortly, after Rachel and you've had a bit, when you look at that, in, in Victoria, you can send people to youth detention centres who are not Australian citizens up to the age of 23. They are not youth. The guys who called us caused a big ride at Parkville. Most of them were the older boys. Before that occurred, they walked around about an hour before and they told the younger blokes, if you don't help us in this ride, we're going to smack you out. That's why you had such a big ride. That is why we only had about five or six of them that got away. The others weren't interested in escaping. It was the older boys. They went on from there, remember, they did carjackings and all sorts of stuff. Bunch of violent rabble. In fact, EC can mean anything the judges, or exceptional circumstances, anything the judges or the magistrates want it to be. In my opinion, exceptional circumstances means you just go ahead and commit violent crime and we don't care. I'm just about, just about to wrap this bit up and then I'll hand over to Rachel. Rachel. But um, the police minister's response to the escalating violent crime, we all saw him on TV surrounded by his new Sudanese mates, well, um, denying there was a youth crime problem. He said, let's put a task force together. We keep putting task forces and having meetings on this problem. We know what the problem is. Put them in bloody jail and the problem goes away. Yeah. That's, that's what we should be doing. And it shouldn't matter what the age is. If you are 13 or you are 14 and you go into somebody's house and you pick their kids up and you pick their wife and you slash up their husbands with a machete, you are old enough to go to jail. I noticed the other night there was not one victim of crime that was sitting on this police task force. <laughs> Commissioner Acton further said in his media conference that the police were locking up offenders. Can I tell you, that's, that, that's a grubby lie. They are not locking up offenders, not youth offenders. Because the youth offenders are getting let back out on bail and community service orders, etc, etc, right? So they are not locking them up. What we're starting to see now is the government leaning on 
police command and saying to them in police command, listen, we need you to say this, right? Remember, they have an election this year. That's why they're a bit concerned. They were hoping the crime problem would go away, but because they didn't address it, it's not going away! It's also interesting if you happen to read the crime stats that in the last 12 months the Victorian police have not solved 49% of all crimes that have occurred in this state. The crime stats state that the majority of those crimes were caused by youth offenders. Because they keep going out and doing the same goddamn thing. Commissioner Ashton also said, and I'll quote, it was utter garbage to claim that the state, state of Victoria is unsafe and that there are only a few hundred years doing this. I want to correct him here very quickly. First of all, that's a lie, Mr Ashton. What you should do, mate, is you should resign from your position as police commissioner and you should go back to the federal police because you're not doing us any favours in this state, right? Let's look at some facts. There are 1,500 to 2,000 youth criminals in this state. 1,500. One of the reasons that we've got so many at the moment and that it's continued to grow is because if you remember out in the eastern suburbs some time ago, a bunch of years, 11, 12, 13, ran through a supermarket, uh, belting a few staff members and stealing stuff. They did the same thing in a shopping centre in the western suburbs. Now, I spoke to one of those guys and I also spoke to his brother. This is what they had to say to me. When I asked, I said, mate, well, why are these people, why are you guys so young and why are you doing this? And they had the mindset that it's their right. Oh, no, but he said to me, this young punk said to me, well, the reason we're doing it is because we see our older brothers and their friends driving fancy cars, getting money for drugs, getting jewellery they can sell, and now getting firearms from people who have got firearms in their house. And therefore, we're seeing them on the odd occasion they're caught. We're seeing them being bailed and let out. So we think, why not? Exactly. That's the reason why we have an escalating youth crime problem in the state of Victoria. And in fact, when the police pick up a 13, 12 or 11 year old kid for a violent crime, all they can do is issue a warning. Because that's what we do in this country. On average, I'll speak to some a few bit later on, um, and I've spoken to a lot of people in youth crime centres, including current security staff, ex-security staff, and some of the inmates who are lovely people. One story will stick in my mind forever. This bloke poured petrol over his girlfriend and was about to torture. And one of his mates knocked him down. He got sent to a youth detention centre for that crime for two months. But more importantly, he got sent to Parkland for that crime. More importantly, he had already done time in Marlbury for home invasions. Well, what he proudly called aggravated burglaries. They're not aggravated burglaries, they're home invasions. Um, so that's the reason why youth crime is, is, is going up, right? 10, 11, 12, 13 year old kids are being allowed to do this sort of stuff because they're seeing their older brothers get away with it. Oh, that's enough, that's enough getting stuck into the police, it's not a, it's getting stuck into the police, it's getting stuck into Graham Ashton. He, he, he just hasn't got a clue, this guy. And here's one of the problems we have here. For some strange reason, the Australia, sorry, the Victorian government continually appoints people to the job of police commissioner who are not Victorian police officers. They come from the federal police. I mean, truth be known, Graham Ashton was probably walking around the airport somewhere in Sydney before he got this job. Christine Nixon was plucked out of Wollongong in New South Wales. Send her back! <laughs> She's a disgrace! Stand up. Okay, let me have a quick look at the judicial system. I do intend later on, if uh, time permits, to come back and name a few judges, right, and magistrates. I'll fucking hate them. But, but, the ones that are soft on crime. The judicial system's approach to violent, to violent crime epidemic uh, epidemic is to adopt the legal system that states as soon as you are a youth offender and you walk into a courtroom, the judge or magistrate stands up and says, everybody gets bailed, everybody gets community service orders, you kill 20 people, oh, go on, go ahead and do it again. And sadly, in a courtroom where victims of crime give evidence, 
I have seen the offenders treated by the judicial system, by the judge or the magistrate, treated with more dignity and more respect than what the poor woman was who was belted. What about the victims? The victims get nothing. Right. Let's look at some other facts. On the 13th of October 2017, the High Court of Australia, which sits in Canberra, the bustle and metropolis of Canberra, said, and I'll quote, the Victorian judicial system does too little to deter serious crimes. Of course, in Victoria they come out, ah, the High Court doesn't know what it's talking about. The High Court does know what it's talking about. It does not deter serious crimes because it imposes overly lenient sentences and they are not always administrating sentences in accordance with the law. Civil libertarians, magistrates and judges. Huh? On the 4th of December 2017, the Police Association said that the statistics show that judges' sentencing is out of step with community expectations. Why the hell did they wait till December 2017 to say that? We've known that for years! Wayne Garrett, the head of the police, Wayne Gatt, the head of the police association, said the data showed that maximum sentencing for serious crimes in the state of Victoria is non-existent and/or redundant. It's very true. Now this guy, I have a little time for this guy, Peter Farquhar, Farquhar, QC, former National Crimes Authority chairman, wrote that youths would stop. I love this quote. Youths would stop breaking the law if they faced harsh punishment. Yay! That's directly from this guy who was chairman of the National Crime Affair. Hey, run, run, run for Parliament, mate. He went on further to say that youths would have to have a litany of proven criminal conduct before they ended up in a youth detention centre in the state of Victoria. I mentioned before I've spoken to heaps of people. I can tell you now, if you are a youth and you get sentenced to a youth detention centre, here's how the courts work. You must have committed at least four violent home invasions where people were injured. You must have committed at least four violent carjackings before you will go to a youth detention centre. Or four violent assaults or four violent business invasions and or a mixture of. That's what you have to do. They won't send you for one or two, you've got to be four. They keep giving you bail, community services, etc. Excuse me, lady over there, do you want to come up here and sit down, mate? What the walk out there, hello? Did somebody just mention to that lady there if she wanted to come and sit down, it might be easier for her. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> so we have, um, we, we, we have basically the High Court of Australia, we have uh, Peter Farris, we have um, the Police Association, and God Almighty, we have plenty of the general public saying that walls aren't strong enough. So it makes you wonder why the government doesn't change that. Maybe they don't want to be elected. Yeah, let's kick it out! <laughs> okay. Hi, Dan. Peter said that children were capable of committing traumatic crimes on victims, which inflicted on those victims long psychological problems. Well, we know that. I know, I speak to a lot of them. Finally, he said that without a consequence for criminal conduct, criminal conduct, conduct is likely to continue. In other words, if you don't stop, start putting these bastards in jail, it's going to keep happening. He was right. The greatest insult to the victims of crime and to the innocent men and women in our state is that when we see these terrible, terrible, violent crimes occurring and the people fronting court, and then these people are let out, Free, the victims of crime sink to an extremely low ebb in life. Okay, I'm about to wrap this up for, for, for my little bit here and I'll hand over to Rachel. But um, look, this is what we as citizens of Victoria must do to gain back our safety. It's no good sitting around complaining about it and being keyboard warriors. Right? I'll tell you now, I've heard this directly from... Um, I've heard this directly from... Um, Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what she said. I'm sure, I'm sure she was complimenting me. Um, but anyway, it's no good sitting around and, and and complaining about it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever because I've heard this from a Labor staffer who I know, and he said to me that the politicians, the only thing that they take notice of 
is lobby groups and people on the streets protesting. When they cannot put us into a hole like a vigilante group or whatever, they really take, they really start to take notice, right? But they're not interested in numbers on Facebook groups or any of that. They, they, they don't think that will affect their, their um, the voting public, right? But we've got 34,500, I think, that are tied up in Facebook Victoria. So I'm somewhat disappointed that we haven't got many here today and there, right? But what we will do is we will keep pushing to have the laws changed or hopefully we will change the government. All we want, all we want is our safety, the safety and security which we once endured in Melbourne. All we want is that given back to us and then we go away. So let me finish up this little bit by saying there, there are two answers that I can see that we got to this. We wait until November the 8th, 2018, and vote the Andrews government out. Yay! And hopefully get in a government Yay! that will look after us. But I can tell you now, I'm not sold on the Liberals. I am not sold on the Liberal Party at all. I think they're very wishy-washy. We have what's called in the state of Victoria, man, sentencing for some crimes like a coward punch. I'll talk about that later on. It's meant to be 10 years jail. Yeah. No. Just wrong. No, no. I speak the truth. I live with my fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do I, mate. Um, yeah. I mean, mate, I got some really good. I got some really good speakers. Sit, sit, sit around, mate. Anyway. <laughs> um, but um, I, I've actually met Matthew Guy and Edward O'Donoghue, and I can tell you that they they don't do anything for me because Matthew, which is good, he says we're going to have mandatory sentencing for this and for that and for that. He has not mentioned anything about youth crime. I said to him, where are your youth crime policies? He said, oh, we haven't released them yet. Well, I mean, if you haven't released them, please, 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 release them so we know what we're going to be voting for. Don't tell us you're going to do something. Do it. But, managed resistance. We have in place in Victoria where you do a coward punch found guilty of where a person dies, you are meant to go to jail for 10 years. Not for all, 10 straight years. The boy who killed Jaden Walker got five years. Jaden Walker, Mr. Andrews, was a very, very precious human being. And his killer got five years. There was another guy who also got five years. So met up for another coward's punch that guy died in. These are meant to be mandatory sentencing. So we have a judicial system who won't even listen to the government. Now, it's got to the stage where all of us, our friends and our family, have really got to stand up because if we don't, more of us are going to die, more of us are going to be injured. So we need to get people out and mobilised and really show the government exactly what we're going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Now that we're in the election year, we're going to have another rally at the front of Mr. Andrews's Noble Park electoral office. Yeah. We're going to put one in in front of Lisa Neville's. Lisa Neville's office down in the thing of Ballerine. Interesting, Daniel Andrews sits on a margin of 4.6%. Anything in Australia, in any Australian electorate below 8% is a marginal seat now. Huh? Lisa Neville sits on a margin of 4.8%. These seats are beatable. And we've just got to let these politicians know we're getting out there that we're not going to vote for them. Martin Kapula, I've just forgotten what he sits on, the Attorney General, but anyway, I'll go visit him too. Down the south in the Casey area uh, around Frankston and that, there are some ALP seats and some Liberal seats who sit on margins who sit on margins of 0.5%. These seats are gettable for anyone but the current people sitting in them. So we'll target those seats as well. And hopefully as time goes on and time rolls on, more and more people will come out. When they see that we're a peaceful group, we don't cause trouble, we're not going to march anywhere. Yeah, okay, so on that note, what I want to do, I want to, I want to come back a bit later and talk about um, the solutions. No more stuff on the crime. We know where all the crime problems lie. 
We know whose fault it is. We know who's to blame. Now let's look at some really good solutions that a dead church for any government to implement. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.